have to do now, just uh, looking at the time. I know that um, uh, before the webinar today, I asked the three of you to select some campaigns that you felt were you know, highly creative. So, Charlie, can I get you, first of all, to talk through the two that you've chosen and just explain what it is about them that, you, that really caught your eye and uh, what yeah. you're talking about them? Well, this, this, this first idea is called uh, the Bentley Burial. Um, it was to raise awareness of organ donation in Brazil. Um, this is a PR idea at its very, very heart. Um, but it's a PR idea designed by and created by Leo Burnett that was entered into and won in the promo and activation category. So I think already there's a conversation around uh, entering strategy, um, how to make sure your campaigns get seen by the right people. The idea here, this is, um, this is a famous eccentric billionaire count from Brazil. Um, I think he's married, he's cockatoo, um, <laughs> which goes to explain quite how. Uh, <laughs> he, he went no, on, he's got he a trophy went, wife as well, you know. He has. Yeah, he went on to um, a live TV and announced that he was going to do like the pharaohs and bury a $500,000 500, Bentley in his garden. Now, obviously, this kicked off a huge storm on Twitter. Everybody talking about what a waste when there are people out there starving. He invited people to the live burial. All the news companies came, uh, dug a big hole in the garden, uh, went on all the TV programs to, again, talk up his kind of recklessness. And just as the Bentley was being rolled into the ground, he went, oh, right, I've changed my mind, everybody indoors. And he took everybody indoors and he said, every day, if you thought I was mad to bury half a million dollars worth of vehicle, well, every day, half a million dollars worth of things more valuable are buried, and that is people's organs. Oh. So people, uh, people are wasting money like you thought I was wasting money. I'm encouraging everybody to sign up to donate their organs, a classic piece of misdirection, um, really brilliantly done from a media perspective. And it's a, it's a PR idea, and it's the kind of brave, you talked about bravery earlier, it's exactly the type of brave creative work that I'd love to see us doing more, and certainly in a country where something like organ donation is, is highly stigmatized, um, is incredibly successful. No above the line, no big TV campaign, but a campaign that drove real talkability and conversation. Um, and this uh, idea, do it for Denmark, um, I, it just kind of, it marries or brings together two trends that I think are, are, are often prevalent at CAN, um, uh, social purpose um, and just great creative ideas. This, this is a campaign for a travel company, Speeds Travel. Um, they found a really interesting um, cultural insight, which was that the population of Denmark is declining. Um, they wanted to uh, address this. They know that more people have sex on holiday. So if you go on holiday with Speeds Travel and you conceive a child, um, you will get um, a number of prizes, free holidays, and a, life, and a three year supply of nappies. Um, but what I like about it, it's, 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 a, it's a promotion. But it's a promotion that they have linked to a wider social issue. So help the declining Danish population uh, and go on holiday with us. It's just a really nice way of tying those two together. Um, I've so you've got a weekend break with real impact. I, I, I really like this campaign. You should have done better than it did. Uh, Kerry, we've got two from you up next. And actually, I think the first one was what you were talking about earlier, where you were talking about really building the momentum yeah. and, and a long-term sort of strategy. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I mean, clever, just really clever. And, you know, November started um, three guys in Australia back in 2004 just talking, you know, mucking around, talking about, you know, starting in the 80s. And, and, and then this, this idea popped out, you know, should, you know let's grow a moustache. Um, and then, you know, they got a few of their mates to do the same thing. And then we're like, ha-ha, we've tapped into a thing. Mm -hmm. And then the idea of tapping it into a charity um, came about. And, you know, obviously we all know what Movember is, obviously when Movember is, and, you know, it has become a, a thing, part of the zeitgeist, everyone sort of knows about it. Um, and obviously it's spread and it's global, a global thing now. Um, so, you know, I love it. And, and I think sort of this year they're looking at how to kind of involve girls, you know, females more in, and sort of chicks love Mo. And I just think it's sort of endless. And, but I love the way that it, it sort of grew organic organically from just tapping into, as I said, just a thing. 
Mm. Um, so I think it's very, very clever. Yeah, this is one of our own. It wasn't mine, um, but uh, hashtag now get standard Fergie type. Now, we're talking about being brave and reactive, and I, we can't always do this, but this was, you know, um, Alex Ferguson, as we know, retired, and, you know, very he was famous for his added, you know, added sort of injury time and using that for the, for the, uh, the benefit of his team. And we decided, why don't we jump on the back of this? And I think we were one of the first that did it. So we decided to um, to honour Sir Alex Ferguson by keeping our restaurants in, in Manchester open um, for an extra five minutes. Um, and you know, we didn't know how it would you know react, but you know, we, we you know, luckily we've got a very sort of uh, we've got a big social media Twitter following. So went out on Twitter, and it just. You know, it, it tapped into something, and you know, I think it was retweeted 10,000 times within 20, 15, 20 minutes. And then on the back of that, we were able to sell that into media, and other other publications picked up on it. Um, and yeah, so um, I think it's just a demonstration of just how you can be, re you know, if you're nimble, reactive, no budget required. Um, use use your use what you've got, use your own, and media. You can you know you can uh, create some really nice really nice campaigns. Really nice. Does that, did that have then a business impact at all? Um, yeah, I mean it did because obviously the restaurants are open for sort of an extra time. How many time. restaurants have you got there? there? Um, in Manchester, there's 50, 10, 10, 15 restaurants. So yeah, so yeah, it did have a have an impact on um, you know on sales for sure. Excellent. Okay, and you've got two that you were going to talk through as well. First one being Belden's chewing gum. Yeah, this is a case that I really, really love. I think this is really brilliant. Um, they probably could have exploited the idea a bit more, um, but what I really like about this idea is that it really dives into, uh, let's say, a social tension. Um, maybe in order for you guys to understand what this case is about, Beldent is a chewing gum brand, and uh, a lot of people don't think that chewing gum is wise because it makes you look really stupid and it is not really good for your image. Uh, basically, what Beldent wanted to do is that they wanted to prove that if you chew gum, uh, that you are being perceived as more popular, smarter, sexier, and basically just a nicer person. Basically, so what did they do? They um, they they looked for uh, a series of twins, um, they put them in um, a museum somewhere and basically what you saw was an installation of two twins sitting next to one another, very identical looking twins, same clothing, same posture, everything you want and basically one twin was chewing gum and the other wasn't. And then the audience basically just, you know, had to indicate whether they thought that whether the non-chewing or the chewing gum, um, the, the other, the chewing twin was either smart and nicer or basically cleverer than the other one. And for instance, what you would see, and, and, and you should really take a look at the case, is that, for instance, you see two boys chewing gum, and then uh, they ask you which one is having a better sex life, and obviously it's the one chewing gum. It's the same with two guys dressed as policemen saying which is the good cop and which is the bad cop. Obviously, it's the good cop is the one that is chewing gum. Uh, it's the same with two, basically, just two adult men dressing in, uh, basically, just dressed in grey suits, uh, saying, well, if those were your boss, uh, which one is probably most likely to let you go after you ask for a pay raise, then, well, and then basically it was the one that was not chewing gum. So the whole idea and the concept that is behind it is that they said, you know, it's all about raising the permissibility of chewing gum. But it's being done in a really clever way and it makes people smile and it is just, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's just really nice. I like it a lot. It didn't raffle a big prize. I have been rallying for it. Uh, but obviously some members of our jury thought that the media visibility that this case generated wasn't high enough. But I think it's lovely. Good. All righty. And then the next one is Tui. This is a New Zealand campaign from New Zealand, wasn't it? And Charlie yeah. loves it. Yeah. Oh. 
What I think is incredibly clever about this campaign is that, um, you know, this is a beer brand that have been sponsoring um, sports for quite a while, uh, but for whatever reason, and it's linked to 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 um, to basically just legal constraints, they couldn't be showing their beer brand before a certain uh, before a certain hour in the day. So basically. They said, "Well, we have been sponsoring sports for so long, but um, but we can't really be visibly present. So, is there a smart way around it?" And the only thing they did is basically they provided everybody who wanted to, if you were buying a pack of beer, with a T-shirt, and basically on the T-shirt is an aim. I think it's called an aim in 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 in, in English. Correct me if I'm wrong. The the, the thing that is on the chest. What's well, a target? Yeah, is that? Yeah, target. That's yeah, a target. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so they would show a target on basically on 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 the chest of the people that were wearing the T-shirt, and everything they had to do is just make sure that if the ball would go out of the of play, basically of the playing zone, that if they could catch it with one hand, they would um, win a hundred k. Now, I think that is a really really clever very straightforward idea but it generated a lot of visibility and it generated a lot of word of mouth a lot of word of mouth and there was like a ton of media visibility and the cleverness for me or the creativity for me was that they kind of build it on um, they kind of build on an existing situation they had been sponsoring the sports for ages and they just wanted to be more present and the only way it really took them in order to make the quantum leap that obviously they, they, they made was by creating t-shirts and just inventing a game and I think that's pretty clever and that's what I meant when I previously said it doesn't necessarily always need to be completely wacky and wild and, and, and outrageous and stuff that you've never seen this is an idea that has been done before but if you put everything together this is very fresh and very new and I think it's really wonderful and I think something like 40, by the end of this campaign, 40% of attendees were wearing these T-shirts, and that's just a, that's a phenomenal exactly. result. Yeah, people just wearing exactly, yeah. Brand. It was a, it was a sea of orange. It, it really took over New Zealand. So um, yeah, it probably says more about Kiwi people than about the rest. But anyhow, I think it is really brilliant because it was it is a small clever idea, and it and it very nicely ties back into the rest of the communication mix. It is not a standalone thing. It is a part of everything else they were already doing. So that makes sense. And from beer to Barbie, I think it is. I think we've got yeah, Barbie. Well, I really wanted to put Barbie in here because this is a this is a oh. um, a concept, or let's say this is a campaign that 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 really polarizes. Um, I'm not sure whether you have heard or whether you have read about the unapologetic uh, campaign of Barbie, um, but that is um, um, this is an idea that you either love or hate. Um, um, some PR people say, oh, this is a brilliant PR campaign, and other people really just loathe it and think it's really crap. What I think is really smart about it is that it really it really managed to kick into action a very, very, very big um, um, conversation between people. And the concept of the idea is fairly simple, um, a very strong hashtag, unapologetic. Um, and it's basically about Barbie saying, well, you know, sort of, I know I'm thin, I know I'm gorgeous, I know I've got beautiful blonde hair, I know that I've got big blue eyes, and, and I'm, I'm really, I'm cute. And, and, I, and I'm kind of proud of that as well. But you know what? I'm quite smart as well. And in order to prove that, um, they hijacked or basically rather paid for the cover page of uh, Sports Illustrated, and they had Barbie basically just you know figuring on the uh, on the on the front page, and then in the rest of uh, basically of the magazine there would be um, top models that really build a very successful career after basically modeling or even during modeling, and they said, well you know what we're gorgeous, but we're really smart as well, and we're really good business women. So basically, what Barbie did with this campaign is that they kind of played a bit with um, 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 a public perception that was already installed, but they played it in such a manner that basically they kicked into action a big, big conversation. And in order to support that, they um, they have been placing a few ads 
I think in EFT as well. Um, anyway, anyhow, it was a it was a financial publication in order to make sure that basically this was a campaign that was really well understood, and that was a, that it was a campaign about basically celebrating beauty, but also brains. Now, this is a campaign that has been implemented and created by Weber Shantwick, uh, and it, it kind of feels like a real, um, a real, uh, let's say, PR idea and a real PR campaign as well. But you already noticed that they kind of kicked around um, and, and they played with a few paying elements as well, because they obviously paid for the cover of Sports Illustrated and they paid for the ads as well. But it was a huge storm. There was a huge controversy, there was huge um, uh, basically conversation on this topic and basically what it, it, it really did what it had to do, making people talk and ma ma making people think differently about Barbie. I think that within our jury this is the case that we probably talk most about, um, uh, again because it really polarizes. Some people think it's an extremely clever PR stunt and some people say, ah, nah, I don't like it at all. Um, but that being said, you know, it makes people talk, and that is, at the end of the day, what we all want with the campaigns that we create. Thank you very much, guys. That's great. And that's uh, definitely, I'm sure, given our listeners some food for thought there. Um, we've been monitoring. We've got about 10 minutes left, and we've been monitoring all the questions that have come through. And actually, the question that we've been asked most is whether you've got any tips on how to be creative and how to you know, get the juices flowing and how you go about the creative process. So we've, so thank you for all your questions, everyone who sent them in. And we've actually asked um, our three panelists today to put together their top tips. So I'm going to ask Charlie to um, just talk through his, first of all. Um, you won't be surprised to see the first one. The first one. <laughs> I'm uh, they'll, they'll probably be within your, they may be within your organization. They may be people that, you know, we talk a lot about reacting really quickly to, um, challenges from clients. We work with a team of improvisational comedians who help us do that because improv comedians are the best at coming up and reacting to comments and producing entertaining content. So we work very closely with a, a comedian group who help our, our TM offering. But more broadly than that, I just think that specialisms is the way that the industry is going and there's, if you can find uh, and uh, tap into those specialists, then you'll be in a better place. Um, second, um, I can't stand the word consumers. Um, consumers to me feels like these people at the end of a human caterpillar style chain eagerly awaiting to be full of your messages. And people aren't like that. Um, people aren't consumers, they're people. Um, and if you think about them as consumers, you're automatically, I think, um, skewing your thinking to a corner of a demographic or a broad swathe of the population. If you think people are waiting to hear from you, you're mistaken, they're not. If you think of them as people, then hopefully you'll produce more emotionally engaging work. Your work will be grounded in something that's relevant and real. Uh, and the final bit is more of kind of a, of a personal one, really. Um, I, some research recently I read indicated that people in the UK wouldn't care if 92% of brands disappeared overnight. And for an industry that spends billions on marketing, that's got to keep us awake at night. Um, but um, I kind of think that if you are passionate about something in your life, whether it's about democracy, whether it's about female education, whether it's about um, uh, stopping child, child exploitation, uh, that sooner or later you will come across a client or an opportunity which will enable you to bridge your purpose, the thing that you're passionate about, with a thing that a brand can step in and help with the government taking more and more money away from social enterprises, brands have more of a role to play than ever before in helping fill the gap. And I think that in, in the, I think that if you are able to help bring your purpose together with a client's purpose to solve something within society, we'll move from being this kind of ephemeral um, uh, industry to something that, that can create real sustainable change. Good stuff, Kerry. What are your thoughts for um, our listeners on? on you know, tips they can take away to improve on the creative part. Yeah, I mean, I, th I definitely think, um, you know, the best, best source of creativity is, is other people. And um, I think you need to, you know, and I think that kind of goes into what you're saying about not uh, seeing people as, you know, end users as consumers. Um, and just being interested and talking to people, asking questions, and whether they, you know, talk to the people that you are, 
you know, making stuff fall, selling stuff fall, producing stuff fall, you know, how do they use the product, you know, just be interested and talk to people, and ideas can come from anywhere, um, so that's kind of one and two, um, get out of the office, if you can, if you can't get out of the office and at least change where you are, you know, where you're sitting, go and sit with someone else, go and sit in your boss's, you know, at your boss's desk, um, but definitely get out of the office, um, you know, uh, and start, but an exercise stimulates creativity. Um, and you know, leading from that is, you know, your, your, I think creativity can be exercised. You know, it's a muscle. Um, you know, go and put stuff into your brain. So go, go to exhibitions. You don't have to just go to those exhibitions. Read stuff. Um, you know, try new experiences. Um, yeah, just, just, just get out there. We had two, a few questions actually from people about whether fashion and art and that sort of thing can influence creativity. So that's exactly what you're saying. You're saying big tick, big yes on that one. Go to, yes. go to the news station and buy a magazine you've never read before once mm. a month. Mm. And just flick, flick through, let it wash over you. Yeah, horse and hound. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anything, anything. And over to you. What about your thoughts there? Ah, I'll be quiet. Well, well, it's actually it's actually very similar to what uh, you know to what what's been shared before. Um, I think shut up and listen is a really good one. Um, <laughs> if you listen really carefully, you, you hear so much better. And 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 if you really do understand what the challenge is all about, uh, it's so much easier to come up with the right kind of creative idea. Um, what, what I feel very strongly about as well is that you really have to dare to fail and that you have to dare to basically make a fool out of yourself sometimes if you just you know kick around creative ideas. So that means that you really have to venture out of your comfort zone. If you are not willing to do that, basically it's, 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 it's one of the many 50 shades of gray and it will probably never be bright white or really pitch black. And I think that those extremes are most often the most interesting creative ideas. And obviously, you will probably tone them down um, because that's how it always goes in the real world. But, um, but you know, you just have to be brash and daring. And, 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 and that means that, you know, you have to be wild sometimes, but not always. <laughs> And then, last but not least, reality check. Um, you are not the only smart and creative person around. Um, it, it's true that especially creative people think that they are probably even better than sliced bread, but, um, but it's really good to reach out to other people, and it's good to be humble, and it's good to be, you know, just to, to understand that there's, there's a lot of other people out there that can feed you with good ideas and that you should listen to them and shut up sometimes. Excellent. All right. Well, look, um, that has whizzed through, whizzed by very quickly. That's that's our hour up, I'm afraid. So, thank you very much for all your gems, um, for running through the case studies, for leaving us with some of your top tips. We really hope that everyone that tuned in today is feeling a bit more creative and inspired, and um, is going to go out and. Um, and, and do something that um, our three panelists have suggested. And if you've got any other questions for us that you'd like us to field to Anne, Charlie, or Kerry, just let us know, and um, I'm sure they'd be really happy to answer your specific questions. But thank you so much for tuning in today, and have a good rest of the afternoon. Thank you so much to our panelists, lovely people. Take care. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.